Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're finally doing it. I've been afraid to open this bourbon, but we're gonna do it today. All right, Ben, let's tell them what we have. Well, we've got one of your expensive bottles, so that's always good for me. Oh, I yeah. see, yeah. So we, we've got, bam, this is Kentucky Owl Confiscated. Okay, so this is, I don't really know much about Kentucky Owl Kentucky as a distillery. I, I don't either. I've had this before. Okay. Do you want to do that? Because I'll just... Oh. It's actually not even plastic, so that one I could have probably done. Didn't you have to... I don't know. There's a little tab. Sorry, I can't see. Blind. Greg's failing this time. Well, I was set up <laughs> for failure. Long ago. Long ago. So long ago. True. So anyway, I don't really know much about this. I know that Kentucky Owl products are on the expensive side. This one yes. I think runs about 120 bucks for yep. the bottle. Yep, and I just saw it. I happened to see it like in the like special reserve behind the counter spot at a and liquor store. This was quite a while ago. Right? It was, it was, it was over a year ago. Shelf for a while. So I took a risk, but then it kind of sat on the top shelf. I was afraid to open it. And now we have. Not bad. Oh, I forgot to get my little whiskey glass here. You gotta get the Glen out. All right, so this one, what's the proof on this bad boy? 96.4, which right. is right in the sweet spot. Sure. But I don't know any details about how old it is. It actually looks younger. Pour that a little thicker maybe than I needed to, but. Well, it's the first. It's your expensive whiskey, so. It's the first review of the day. Yeah. I have had this before a couple of times. Okay. Ooh, that's got a nice, rich. Just double checking for an age statement, but I really don't think there was one. Is there a state of distillery on it? There's legally supposed to be, I believe, but. I bet. Boy, it's almost like we should have done this stuff before we started no, it's, filming this. No, enjoys it. It's from Kentucky, but that's Okay, so it's not like an MGP source. That's got a really nice nose on it. From what I understand, I think they do a lot of blending. Okay. Um, it, it, maybe don't quote me on that, because like I said, I don't know a ton about this particular brand, but I think that's kind of their jam. Yeah. It, like, I, I saw it, I bought it, but then it went on the shelf, and then I've seen a few more, mm -hmm. but they're all expensive, and I just kind of like ignored them for like a year. And finally, I was like, all right, we need to, you know, open it for the channel. Rich so. caramel oak and wood sugars. Yeah, it's got a real nice blend of like a interesting barrel char mm -hmm. with caramel. Let's go in for the taste before right, we spend too much time on the nose we... here and see what happens. Nice toffee. There's also a, there's kind of a hot, there's like a warm peppery note on the back end of that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like. A lot of flavor for in the 90, was it four? 96. Okay, yeah, 96.4. A lot of good flavor almost for like being Almost like cane sugar though. It's like granulated sugar almost. Yeah, the wood Don't, sugars yeah. that I was, yeah. It is really prominent. It's mm -hmm. good, it's, it's really good, but boy, the sweetness. From the start to the finish, there is a sweet note that just stays, mm -hmm. which is not typical. I think sometimes I get that on the, the starter, but it doesn't stick around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's almost one where we've mentioned before how sometimes that sugary taste almost invokes kind of a texture yeah. in your mind. Mm -hmm. So it's not like obviously the liquid is textured, but that, that granular texture. Yeah, right. That just reminds you of. It's got a little bit of a kind of a tannic note to it with that oak. Sure. I get that mm. like almost like an astringent kind of like yeah. bitter. Yeah, of, there is a slight which is little weird bit. Because it's soup. Like I think this may be the most sweet bourbon I've ever had. Like it's way up it's, there. It's on very the sweetness. sweet. Yeah. But it also has this bitter note, which is kind of like the opposite side of the flavor wheel, but. Mm -hmm. 
it's interesting. Real high density, but it, it, we've said several times that sometimes you don't notice the proof point. On this one, I notice it. It's pretty prominent. Like, like I would almost guess that the alcohol proof is higher than 90. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, it's, it's for being sub 100 proof, it definitely has a lot of punch to it, which is great. Yeah, that's just got really... It has a lot of flavor and a lot of different flavors. <laughs> mm -hmm. On one hand, it's really down the middle with, it's got like these basic, really kind of turned up, bold, standard bourbon notes. And then... Hey, that's where we got the name of the channel. <laughs> right? I imagine they didn't even know that. And, uh, but then it's got like, yeah, it's got all this other stuff kind of wrapped around the top of it, like that tannic note and then that that little building heat, a little bit of pepper on the, the back end of it. Yes, I mean, I would say that it's got a bunch of different flavors that are really good, but then it has a couple of harsh notes, mm -hmm. which sometimes add character and inter interest. Which the, I think it does whiskey. on this, yeah. Um, there is a couple things I think that maybe I want to give it another try. I mean, obviously I'm going to enjoy the bottle, but <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple of notes on there that are a little... I don't know, like the finish, like the long finish, like it has a grassy note, like like the end flavor on my tongue. Really, I'm not really little, getting that. I don't, which is maybe like a real heavy rye kind of note, I guess. That bitterness, maybe almost like a dark chocolate yeah. bitterness. But yeah, yeah, without the sweetness at the very, very end, which is a little bit interesting. So this one, I would definitely say, with that kind of tannic bitterness that comes along with it, yeah. even though it's sub 100 proof, I don't, I wouldn't recommend this as like a, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it as a beginner's bourbon at the price point. At the price point. But I mean, yeah. if you have somebody over who's new to bourbon, like this is maybe, this is a little aggressive in the flavors, which I think is great. Totally. But, but this, this is a whiskey geek kind of whiskey. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. suppose that's the short, direct way of yeah. getting to where I was trying to go with that. You know, you've never had anything in this category. Why don't you start with this one? Mm -hmm. Bad idea. Man. Changing a little bit from sip to sip, mm -hmm. that bitterness is kind of curving a little bit, but that sweetness, that caramel and that kind of granular sugar, oaky note is really sticking around. Yep, I agree. I think it's really good. Now, at $120. Oh, okay, I have another question before we get to the price discussion. Mm -hmm. Could you go slow, but could you sip on this all evening? Yeah. With the sweetness. Yep. I think my Because I like that. Well, I tend to like sweeter bourbons, and there's a ton of bourbons that I really like because of the sweetness. Mm -hmm. I'm reluctant to have another pour of this. Just, I don't know. Like, I feel like it... So it's like when you have a dessert that's it's too rich. Too rich. And it tastes like, great, but it's just it, like... You love it, you love it, and I'm done. Yep, yeah. exactly. So this, yeah, that's what almost what I'm thinking on this one, is it's almost too sweet, and I didn't know I could get there, but I got there. You know, I guess I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I, I could sit and sip on this easily, but I could see how it would get a little bit yeah, much. I don't know. Yeah, something like... Like almost like too much of a good thing. Exactly, yeah. You know, and I don't say that in a bad way, but I've brought up before like French silk pie, and I think you said you... I don't know if you just never had French silk pie. I don't think pie. I have had it. Anybody who's watching, the thing about French well, silk pie is it tastes great, mm -hmm. and then you get halfway through it. Or like a big stack of pancakes. Well, there you go. It tastes super awesome, and you get halfway through them, you just want to die. And, and done. it's like, I can't handle another bite of this. It's too much. Yeah. You know? That's the kind of the what I'm getting on this. It, it's really good. I don't see anything that I really dislike. But I don't want any more of it right away. Like, this is, this is going to sit on the shelf and be the occasional... Well, it was a $120 bottle, so it's maybe a good quality to have oh, in an expensive I, I, I bottle. So. It's like, yeah. you know, you just want one pour once yeah. in a while. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, though, I would recommend trying this. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, like, if you, if you find a bar that has this. I, again, yeah. I know it's not a common one to have in a bar, but if you're in Buffalo, Minnesota, Jay's Down Under, stop down there. They've got a bottle of it. Mm -hmm. They have in the past. I'm sure they sure. will yeah. in the future. So, yeah, I would recommend at least getting a bar pour of it because it is definitely interesting for sure. But the $120 price point is pretty tough. I mean, $120 for any bourbon is kind of tough if you really think about... Because there's some great stuff at 50 bucks. Yeah, set aside so, the collector's yeah, item yeah. aspect of it. Yep. I mean, some things that are super rare and like 17 year and yeah. whatever, you, you have to pay, pay a premium for that. And that's mm -hmm. totally understandable. But there are certain ones where it's like, I don't really know where that 
premium price point comes from because there is no age on this. And yeah, it's a good bourbon. It's a, yeah. a nice blend, but it's not like it's terribly rare. It is a round, so it, and it's not a cask strength. And so you really kind of wonder what is driving that price point. And yeah. if it's maybe one of those things where it's just like, let's make this expensive, make it a premium bourbon just for the sake of being a premium oh, bourbon. I totally thought you were gonna make a Basil Hayden joke and you didn't need to. I mean, now that you bring it up, <laughs> overpricing something just to make it look fancy to get people to buy it because they're like, hey, that's fancy. Well, let's yeah. double that price and add another 20 bucks and then here you go. Uh, a million times better than Basil Hayden, for uh -huh. sure. 84 times. But yeah, so you'll have to, I, I would definitely recommend getting your hands on a pour of this, but I guess, you know, at the 120 price point, that's. That's up to you and your wallet, so. Yeah, totally agree. All right, well, this has been Kentucky Owl Confiscated. On the bourbon note, I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>